So a passive collider, as the name indicates, is an object or geometry that simulated DSDNA models will respond to and collide with. So to create a quick setup to demonstrate this, I'll do I'll create a curve in a slightly different way this time. I'll create a NURB circle. And I'm bringing up the options because I'm not going to create a, a full circle. I'm going to leave a little, a little gap in it. Let's say 330, the sweep angle. So this creates a circle at the origin. I'm going to scale that up a little bit because I know that the size of the DNA model that's created with a system scale of 1 is, um, is, is, uh, is pretty big. So with that created, I'm now going to, and the curve selected, I'll create build. Okay, so here's our, here's our DNA. It's simulated by default, as, as we'd expect. And let's now create an object, a primitive, um, that we're going to collide with this. So let's use uh, some sort of a, let's do a, a polygon cylinder scale it up a little bit kind of as a make it a bar and what I'm going to do is just position it above one of the ends of my of my DNA and just have it animate through the um, this part of the strand and, uh, and we'll see what happens so let's see from above I'll position this like I'll go to top view Make sure that it's positioned like this. Okay. I can scale it up a little bit. And we can move it down so that it's closer. Okay. So, and let's give ourselves maybe a few more frames. Let's say 400 frames. So um, I'm going to, the, the best way to do this is probably to let the DNA be free as it collides with this object. So if you think about it, the, the best situation for it to be free, and yet I still, when I start playing the simulation, I'd like my DNA to be, you know, kind of to stick to this starting position. So in my mind, what that means is that we, we want to keep the DNA, number one, we want to keep it dynamic. Number two, we probably want to use the, the pose, curve, attract profile to ensure that at least this end of the DNA, although it could be the entire strand, is not tied to the curve too much because I want to see how the collisions with this um, results in a, in a different simulation. And I'm probably going to keep the agitation value background pretty low so that this strand doesn't start to flop away in every direction before this thing even has a, a chance to collide with it. So I guess now that we have this selected, let's set up this animation first. Um, let's say about 50 frames in, I'm going to key the position in the Y of this object. So I'll go to translate Y, key selected, and then over, let's say, a period of 30 frames, Let's move this down below the DNA. And I'll key that again. So if we play that back, it should go right down. But of course, the DNA won't, shouldn't respond to it. So it goes right through it, as expected. OK, so now let's set up the DNA to uh, behave as, as we'd expect. So the strand by default is set to simulate. The background agitation, I'm actually going to move down a little bit. And in the pose curve attraction, I'm guessing that this is the end of the, I, I could actually turn the visibility of the model off, go into the curve, see which side has the first CV or not, but I'm just going to uh, empirically test this. So let's say that for most of the model, or at least half the model, I want the curve attract to be really high, but a sharp cutoff where now the value is zero. Right? So this whole side should be 
free to simulate away from the curve, and this first side, if, if it's the correct side, will stick to the curve. All right. So, and, and just to see if I pick the right side, let me turn up the agitation strength and just start simulating this. Yes, so as expected, that was the right side. Okay, so I'll go back, I'll move this down, and let's just see what happens before I've set this to passive collider. Nothing as expected. But now with this mesh selected, I'm going to move down further down in the simulation menu, go to Collision Bodies Passive. And just a note on what passive means. Passive basically means that this is a unidirectional um, effect or relationship. So the DNA model will respond to this passive collider, but um, unless you set up a, a special relationship between the two that is bidirectional, um, you know, the movements of the DNA will not affect the colliding object. All right, so with the mesh selected, I'll just click Add Selected Mesh as Collision Body, and then let's just rewind and see what happens. So there you go. Um, again, the ag agitation is pretty low, so at the moment we're not getting too much crazy motion from the strand by itself, but maybe let's look at that once more from the other direction. So whether you're hoping to achieve this kind of motion because one of your actors is, is literally supposed to get DNA out of the way, or if you have... Um, a particular model where you have a, a protein DNA model and you would like to create a simulation where the DNA is not intersecting with that model, you can create, you could model a proxy piece of geometry that you set as a passive collider and you could turn up the agitation quite a bit and have that strand wiggle around but not um, traverse the piece of geometry that you want to keep um, intact. The only thing I would be careful about, and that's not just related to this kit or molecular Maya, but just these rigid body simulations in general, and that is that the, the amount of uh, geometry, the number of faces, the tessellation on this object will pretty quickly have an influence on the speed of the simulation. Uh, so I would just try to keep that as low as you can and it will speed up your simulation quite a bit.